Well, I will introduce our second featured reader, Rana Bloom from Toronto. Um, and Rana is the author of seven books of poetry. She has led initiatives to bring poetry into healthcare, developing the Poet in Residence program at Sinai Health. Rana has collaborated with filmmakers, chore choreographers, and architects. And in 2018, her poem, The City, was painted by plant architects 35 meters wide on King Street in Toronto. Her recent book is A Possible Trust, the poetry of Rona Bloom, selected with an introduction by Phil Hall by Wilfrid Laurier University Press in 2023. And in 2025, Inner Riptide will be published by Brick Books. And Rona, of course, I, uh, I have read some of your poems uh, to do a reflection on. Um, in one poem, it says, inside all the talking is a deep silence. And that seems true for all poetry, but especially for your poems. In another poem called The Party, it even becomes a philosophical question when you say, if people stop laughing and there's no one to hear it, does it make a sound? These poems seem to, be, to me to be a searching, searching for a truth or a deeper truth, or perhaps the many truths that make up another quote, this experiment of living. In a way, I would call this shapeshifter poetry in the best of trickster traditions, appearing to us each time in a different guise, each time carrying the same essential truth, a truth that can be spoken and that also can't be silent. And Rana, I have the same question for you. Uh, how has poetry surprised you or how maybe does it still keep surprising you? Thank you, Mila, and thank you for those words. I like really touched by what you reflected on my poetry. Um, uh, how it, the poetry surprises me. I mean, and when I saw the question that you sent, uh, I, I was like, the first thought I was had was, it's just a miracle that it ever gets written. You know, it just blows my mind that I, I mean, I feel nothing coming or I feel just like uh, I'm writing a list of complaints or stomach troubles. And, and then, and then another day, there's a poem that just kind of floods out. And I think, how did that happen? And where, from where? Um, and then um, I think that even the other, the, the, the more potent even surprises are that poetry knows so much more than I do that when the poem is, is, is on, it feels like a transmission from somewhere else. And it, you know, it's just using me as a tea bag for flavor. And uh, I, I think, you know, I, it, poetry knows where I'm going way before I do. So I just have to let it, if I can, <laughs> yeah. That's wonderful. And using you as a tea bag for flavor, that's, that has to be the funniest way of describing <laughs> that experience. Well, now we are, of course, very eager to taste that tea. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Um, I just want to also say how moved I was by Jean's work. Um, uh, the content, uh, you know, the, 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 the family uh, feeling and also I mentioned before we started how I lived in Ireland for three years, just up the road from Jean. And I was so like, it just brought the smell of the place and the wind of the place back in a very evocative way that makes me want to visit. And thank you for such a transmission too. Um, so uh, the first poem I, I'm going to read is, um, uh, as, as Mila read, said in the introduction, I, I had a poem that was painted on um, Big Main Street in Toronto, King Street, called The City. And um, uh, I'm gonna read that one. A network of roads spreads finely through fields between tower blocks and building sites. It spins through highways and downtowns and downtowns. Dangerous neighborhoods await arteries. Maps, the city, Toronto, to the city, Dublin, to the city, London, all converge. Circle road, ring road. I am going out all the exits on the highway at the same time, mapping a leg to a shoulder, a memory to a hill, a blue vein to an arm. 
cross sections of the past. Young Street meets King north of Piccadilly Circus like a skin graft. Major intersections cross the body. I don't know where I'm going and the city calls to my voices, my limbs, all my uncertain directions saying, lie down in the not knowing, lie down in me. Um, so, you know, when I, I don't know if they still do this with poetry books or all books is when the contract came for my second book, I had to, um, answer a question like, what are the demographics of this book? And I had no idea, you know, who might want to read a poetry book of mine. And I knew that it was something the publishers needed for their sales, but all I could do was write a poem, which ended up in that book. So this is called Demographics. Men and women, teachers, hospital workers, politicians, people who shop at Loblaws, cake bakers, people who are retired, vulnerable, lost, who don't know the names of things, pretzel eaters, artists, people who've been to any kind of gallery, who ride bicycles, subways, People who walk on oily gravel roads, get parking tickets, hey, have fallen in love with paramedics. People who are intimate with the mouths of flowers, people compelled to watch the Academy Awards, disgusted, who watch news on television. People who want attention without saying so, whose bodies fill with anxiety like a liquid. Who love something that won't leave them and something that will warriors who take vitamins, ambivalent people, scared people who do things, anyone willing. Thank you. Permiso. There's a tree in my heart and I don't know its name. It stands straight behind my breasts like a closed tulip. Permiso, it says, allow me. So these poems, I'm maybe it may be obvious from the title, but just to say that it's they're selected from all of my previous books. So they kind of run chronologically from the first book, which was published in 96, to the last one that came out in 2017 with some books, to, some poems, a few poems to come. So I'm just kind of skating on the surface and reading a few from, from here and there. This is a very short one and it will go by very quickly. I might read it twice. Grief without fantasy. What I lost was not going to happen. I had what happened. There was no more. What I lost was not going to happen. I had what happened. There was no more. So as um, Mila said in the introduction, one of the things that I've spent a lot of time doing is uh, poetry and healthcare and communities and um, there are a number of poems about the healthcare work throughout this collection and there's one big prose poem big fat prose poem at the middle of the in the middle of the book and I, I just want to read a little chunk of it to give you a little flavor of what it was like I, so I was the poet in residence at Sinai Health for seven years and just how I was kind of of doing all kinds of things with, with poetry in the hospital, but just the idea of roaming around hallways as the poet was an odd thing. And uh, this is one paragraph. I met people once and then never again. I met the starving who didn't know they were starving. Return customers in imaging, those waiting for results, 
for tests, for wheel trans, for answers, for a baby. Addictions, grief, the repetitive patterns that embarrass us and ground us and return us to each other. Trauma, fear, irritation, compassion, racism. Flu shots, gunshots, chemo, ortho, maxillofacial, coffee shop, gift shop, bookshop, construction, reconstruction, maternity, residency, redundancy, labor of all kinds, kindness, bed, toilet, tanks, chair, wheels. Do not take for granted who will need or not need anything. My motto? Everyone who is alive could use a poem. Whether they want one is a different matter. Thank you. This is a short one called Rest. I always feel like I need it. I need it after that poem. Rest. In my bed, I'm restless. I want a fellow moon to look at the moon with. What is the old lady across doing up so late? Hello, other moon. So I'll read one more from here. Actually, and this one is a, a new poem that will be in the next collection. And then I will read something, one more, so two more poems. This is called Bukowski. One night, my guy says, I'm not mean enough or funny enough to be a good poet. He's just read Bukowski out loud. Bukowski can fight and confide, so why bother? I agree, but say nothing, which makes me no poet at all now, but a chronicler who wants to sleep and is awoken by the wish to be mean and funnier, to be somebody like Bukowski. But when I look, there's a lot of flotsam, jetsam, pains and wishes, my own shenanigans, <clears throat> but nobody here, nobody to be. The relief of that is like being let out of a jail made of my own emojis and desperation or taking my bra off at night. The difference between a bad poet and a good one is luck, Bukowski wrote, and having your finger in a light socket. Bukowski knew he was nobody. That's what makes him so great. Come to think of it, Emily Dickinson knew first and said so. Everybody knows they're nobody. Why is this such a problem for us? So one more, and this one is new and it's not yet in a, a, a book that's gonna be published, but hopefully it will be. But it was in this journal last year, and it was just um, chosen to be included in something that's called Best Canadian Poetry Anthology 2025. So that's a little bit of a big deal over here, and it just I just found out about it, so I thought I'd share it with you. Where I've been. I've been to where the sky picked me up like Dorothy and took me to a diner. It was kinder than a hurricane, but blue-black. I've been to panic and back several times a day on the no-go bus. I've been freaked. I've been to the phone when it rings and when it sits there. I've been to bed. I've bitten fear into hug hunger and sadness. I've been too crazy for words. I've been without them and with and missing. I've been waking up and waking up scared. I've been reactive and grounded, sober and sober and drunk wandering. This morning early as the feeling started pouring in while the awareness was still bright, I saw how ordinary it is I am to have all these feelings, however dramatic. They cruise across like a kite surfer while I watch from the shore. No, I am flying and surfing and crossing. How it just goes and goes. When the kite surfer fell, I fell. I was what was left. The wake, the waking, the water. Thank you.
Thank you so much. That was awesome.